Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. And this week we're seeing an influx of small bait throughout southern New England, which is setting off uh, striper blitzes throughout the region. We are hearing that more exotic species are joining the mix with the Benito and the Chub Max this week. We're hearing that the tuna bite has changed. Uh, they've moved out of some of the some places and into some others. And we're hearing that the sea bass bite in Rhode Island is red hot. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So let's start with that tuna bite. Um, it's been the, the main subject for the whole summer. And uh, for the first time this week, we've heard of a little bit of a slowdown. Uh, so things aren't quite as good at the gully or the tuna ridge. It seems like a lot of those fish have moved out. Uh, the same could be said for the claw. Uh, in fact, I heard one guy say it was done at the claw. So that bite seems to be over. Uh, but there are still white marlin south of Nomans. There are still uh, white marlin out at the gully. And now we're starting to see more and more tuna showing up at the dump. Uh, mixed sizes there. And then up closer to the island, within sight of the island, um, it's a lot of bait and a lot of those football-sized tuna are around there. So, um, you know, it's still within well within range of a small boat. Bite's still very good. Um, and for those of you with the commercial HMS permit looking for the big ones, it's Crab Ledge and Stell Wagon now. A lot of nice fish up there. Um, and it seems to be that uh, it's mostly a live bait thing. Live bluefish and live mackerel has been working the best. And then the last thing I'll mention, just heading back to Block Island, uh, this is the first week I've heard of consistent jigging, like guys doing really well uh, speed jigging for these bluefin and... Um, you know, depending on who you talk to and where these guys are fishing, sometimes the bite is just off the charts. And there's a lot of sharks mixed in out there, too. So uh, if you're into the whole shark thing, uh, get out there and go. Uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about here in the intro is uh, the, the exotic species. We're seeing more and more of that moving in. And I don't want to just keep repeating myself over and over again. So... You've got chub mackerel in the canal, you've got chub mackerel throughout Buzzards Bay, you've got chub mackerel all throughout Rhode Island and then all the way out to the Connecticut River. And now, especially in Rhode Island, we're seeing bullet mackerel joining them. Bullet mackerel look just like a baby false albacore, except they have a bigger eye. Um, and um, we're seeing more and more of those. They are actually excellent to eat, um, so definitely worth chasing down if you see them out there. Uh, Bonito are spreading out, so you were seeing them from uh, Nantucket Sound and the Vineyard Sound through Buzzards Bay, and uh, the epicenter definitely is like Newport Point Judith area, and uh, I haven't heard of any Bonito coming out of Long Island Sound yet, but I think that there's a good chance of that happening within the next week or two, and um, but the one thing that I have heard of in Long Island Sound that I haven't heard of in any other place is Spanish mackerel. They have moved into some areas in Long Island Sound. So as you can see, uh, hardtail season is well underway. Uh, still probably got three weeks to a month to go before we see any uh, chaseable albies, but it's on. And um, if, if that's your thing, and sometimes it's mine, uh, you know, it's time to fire up the engines because... Uh, these fish are in residence now. Uh, most of these fish that are being caught right now are on the smaller side. Like the canal has some really small bonito. Um, and then the chub max and the bullet max, they are, they're going to go for smaller stuff like flies and tiny little tins. But there are some better sized bonito around. Um, Rhode Island, again, has been the epicenter. And um, they're taking more, you know, typical offerings like, a, like an epoxy jig or an exo jig or something like that. Now we're going to move over into Massachusetts. If you're a striper guy in Massachusetts, you've got a couple places you need to focus on. Um, if you're a surf guy, the North Shore has been very good from Cape Ann up to Plum Island and then even up into Maine. I uh, heard of some really nice catches from a gunquit area this week, some fish over 40 inches. Um, mackerel chunks were like the most popular thing, but I guarantee if you went up there in slung eels, you'd have a good shot at getting those fish. And even, you know, mackerel size swimmers like a... Uh, like a red fin or a one of the larger sizes of the hydro minnows or something like that. Uh, down in the uh, in, down in the North Shore of Mass, Plum Island, and that um, as James Jukes 
predicted as we got the darker nights the boat guys had a little bit of a harder time with it and the surf guys picked up the slack uh, so he said that he got into some fish this week up to 25 pounds on eels um, boat guys are doing well on eels as well um, they it seems to be cape ann has been better for the boat guys and plum island has been better for the surf guys but um, in either case you've got a good shot at getting some better sized fish up there right now and as we kind of finish out this new moon phase and then the next place that's been pretty good for bass in mass is um, is outside the east end of the canal, out toward like Scorton Ledge, Fishing Ledge, and over to Barnstable Harbor. Um, we're starting to see a tube and worm bite lighting up out there. And then some guys are finding these fish on the screen and dropping eels to them and doing pretty well. Um, some better sized fish out there, you know, fish in the, in the upper 30 inch class and into, into the 30 pound range, um, and probably some bigger ones. And then uh, the last spot that's been hot for bass is, as sort of I predicted, you know, that that beach bite on the Outer Cape has continued to kind of trend to the south. So there's fish off of Nosset Beach. There's still some fish at Coast Guard. And it's that same classic bite. The boat guys are getting them during the daytime. They're throwing uh, Ronzi's and um, other soft plastics and things like that. And Leadhead's getting them down deep and picking these fish off when they're staging and then at night it gets dark those guys go home and the surf guys go out they're getting them on needlefish and sluggos and uh, hydro minnows and mag darters and anything slender anything that looks kind of like a sand eel needlefish uh, that's what's getting it done and then the only other bass news that I have is just that there's just so much small bait coming out of the estuaries right now so Buzzards Bay has gone from being like a striper desert to kind of lighten up a little bit we're seeing a lot more blitzing fish this week um closer to the mouths of the harbors and things like that most of these fish are not keeper size but there are a few slot fish in the mix uh average is probably like 20 to 26 inches but it's a lot of them and really fast action if you're looking for bluefish uh the epicenter in mass just seems to be like Vineyard Sound, Nantucket Sound, like that kind of gray area in between, like Horseshoe Shoal and Hedge Fence, those areas. Uh, I haven't heard of any like giant bluefish, but I've heard of fish up into the low teens, you know, I mean, not even teens, like 10, 11 pounds. Uh, a lot of fish more averaging around like seven pounds. Uh, but the action's been very good there. That's been really like the hot zone for bluefish. The only other places that you know, it's been talked about over and over in this report is like Chappaquiddick has been very good for the surf guys. And you can pick them off from some of the inlets on Vineyard Sound beaches uh, as well. Sea bass fishing got a little bit better this week in Massachusetts. So yes, that zone that I keep hammering over and over again, kind of gay head, gnomons, cutty hunk, Nashawina, that little rectangle in there. Very good. A uh, lot of lot of depth change and structure in there. So that's that's where a lot of these fish are being taken. Uh, but I did hear about some fish taken now on the Buzzards Bay side. Um, that hole outside on the north side of Quick's Hole, there's a couple wrecks in there. Guys are pulling some fish off of those. That hole goes down to about 98, 96 feet, something like that. Uh, same thing with the water south of Misham Ledge. And then even some of these like deeper spots, there's a lot of like, uh, a lot of wild depth changes like off of Hen and Chicken's Reef and out, out that way. And uh, there's been some... There's been some pretty good sea bass action there and some bycatch fluke there as well. And speaking of fluke, the place I'm hearing about the most fluke in Massachusetts this week is Lucas Shoal. Uh, seems like that area has been picking up some of the uh, picking up some of the slack this week. It's it's picked up. I don't know. I don't know if I'd call it phenomenal, but there are some keeper fish there and a lot of shorts there. Same could be said for those approaches to the canal, Mashinee Flats, the old canal channel. A lot of short fish, but you got a shot at pulling a few keepers if you put the time in. As we move over into Rhode Island, the bass bite there seems to be transitioning. It's kind of like in between summer and fall. You can blame it on whatever you want. I'm blaming it on this uh, this cold snap, or I don't know if I'd call it a cold snap, but just this fall-like weather that we've had over the past week or so. In my fishing, has really kicked the fishing into gear. The bass bite at night, fishing the surf shallow boulder fields has been red hot, and I'm fishing fast um, that's what I'm finding is working and I've been trying to use some of the you know darters and needlefish fishing them slow and I'm barely getting any hits and I go over to soft plastic fish it fast and I'm on again and again and again um, 
a lot of the bigger fish seem to have moved off. So, you know, guys are topping out on, you know, near shore waters, like 24 pounds or so. Um, and lots of smaller fish, lots of these schooly sized fish and some slot fish in the mix. Uh, but best spots for that would be Newport and the center wall. And then uh, here and there on the breachways, the breachways have seemed to have smaller fish this week. But if you want a big striper, let's all say it together. Go to Southwest Ledge at Block Island. Um, that bite has been kind of a 7-10 split between eels and soft plastics. Most guys are starting with a soft plastic like a GT eel or like a Patriot fish. And if they're not hooking up on the first few drips, they're drips. They're going over to the uh, they're going over to a live eel and taking the guaranteed hits. Just don't forget your circle hooks. Uh, big fish out there. You know, fish up to 50 pounds. A lot of 25, 30, 40 pound fish. Um, like I said, just make sure you got your circle hooks and make sure you don't go outside that line either. There's been a lot of patrols out there lately and uh, from what I've been hearing, they're not too kind if they catch you outside the line. Uh, fluke fishing in Rhode Island is continues to get a little bit better and better. For a while there, was, we were kind of scuffling, you know, a lot of shorts and a lot of dogfish. But uh, last week we saw some improvement at the windmills and now we've seen vast improvement this week at the windmills. Um, still far from a you know slaughter fest out there, but you've got a good shot at getting some keepers here. You're going to weed through some shorts, but also some nice fish. You know, a lot of a lot of reports with a you know with a seven or an eight or a nine in there, maybe two fish of that size. I haven't heard of any double digits, but um, some nicer fish out there, and you got a better shot at getting uh, some more reliable keepers from that area. Sea bass fishing has been phenomenal. Uh, basically from Whale Rock to the center wall, right out to Block, and then over onto the east grounds has been lights out. Um, I mean, these fish are just stacked in like 70 to 100 feet of water. And um, when you see the screen lit up like this, it's basically drop a jig and set the hook. Uh, lots and lots of fish out there. Uh, there's been some bycatch codfish in some of the spots, especially on the east grounds. Some bycatch codfish out of the windmills as well. Um, but sea bass fishing in Rhode Island has just been phenomenal, and, and that's the area. I mean, you can get them anywhere, but um, anywhere you got that water depth, but really block has just been off the charts. And let's see, we talked about the bonito and the tuna and stuff like that in the intro. Scup fishing has been awesome. Uh, shore guys have just been cleaning house. Uh, these fish are uptight, and um, you can get them from any of the rocky spots in Newport and Narragansett. The breachway jetties have all got fish. Watch Hill is always a good spot. Um, and I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in a boat, kayak, inner tube, standing on the shoreline. You've got a really good shot. You just got to find some hard bottom and throw some bait down there. And the fishing has been phenomenal. Um, now, let's, let's see. So, sharking has also been very good offshore this week. And I'm going to throw it over to one of our field correspondents, Dave Bogax. And um, he's going to give us a little rundown of, uh, of one of his sharking trips this week. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Dave Anderson. And welcome to the Fisherman Magazine. I know you've been here a couple of months, but this is my first report to you, so I wanted it to be a good one. Uh, coming at you from uh, Rhode Island, my uh, buddy's place. We went out this morning, woke up at 345, hit the water by 20 after, went out south a block, almost got to our spot we started trolling for tuna so it's uh no surprise to everyone everybody knows by now the tuna bite's been out of control over there so we figured we'd uh give it a shot they got a few a couple weeks ago and uh today we heard people on the radio talking about uh getting a good one here and there but really wasn't lit up like it has been so we had plans to go sharking uh, we we uh, fired over to our sharking spot, started our uh, chumming slick. Two hours we sat there, nothing. My buddy says, uh, Steve says, there, there's a fin, there's a fin. So we're all, we're all on high alert. Small Mako sniffing at our balloons. Jeff goes with the, uh, what's that called? What's that rig? What's, pitch bait he says pitch bait we'll just toss something at it thing goes for it spits it right away steve's like i'm on 10 foot blue shark fought it for about 20 minutes good eight foot eight foot ten foot 
blue shark and there we go back we put our uh our stuff back in the water we're hanging out shark and slow a couple of grinders my buddy steve's like wait a minute you smell peanut butter i said what are you talking about you're crazy balloon starts screaming offline we got a good one jeff's standing there thing breaches the water right next to the boat holy mackerel well it, guess what it wasn't no mackerel jeff jeffer straps me in i fight this fish for over an hour check this out dave look at this thing unreal giant thrasher fought it for an, an hour give or take well, i'll tell you my back sore right now tip to tip we're talking 13 feet but from tip of the nose to right about here 80 inches well i have no idea how much this thing weighs but we all almost pulled our backs out trying to get it into the boat jeff says throw it on the trailer we'll get it up to the house like that Guess what? Now the real work begins. That's what we had going on today. Back to you, Dave. And lastly, I'm just going to wrap things up with my buddy, Captain Christian Awe. And um, he's just going to give us a little rundown of what he's seeing in the waters from, say, Point Judith over to Beaver Tail and then in, heading over toward Newport this week. Take it away, Christian. Hey there, this is Captain Christian Awe from Awestruck Fishing Charters for your first week of august fishing report for rhode island um it is definitely the transition time that we talk about um going from the early summer spring into our late summer fall fishery um a lot of the big striped bass are starting to push off um not seeing as many of those taken every day uh, both from the boats and from the surf um there are a lot of small striped bass around um what we refer to as those bass rafts those shoulder to shoulder uh feeds that you see on micro bait um chub mackerel everywhere bullet mackerel everywhere um all the bass spots seem to just be full of them and they're fun on light tackle um they're good eating so so don't be afraid to get out there even if the striped bass fishing is an awesome black sea bass has been great um my boat has still not boated a bonito yet but i know that they've been caught in newport so it's only a matter of time um false albacore will be right behind uh, there's been some crazy wildlife as well seen way more dolphins in way more numbers than i've ever seen before um i know of some crazy things taken in the fish traps uh off of both point judith and newport whether it's uh big sharks or big tuna there's lots of cool life out there um weather this week has been perfect low wind um calm seas so uh, lots of kayak anglers out there it's competition which is awesome to see um but uh we're almost there it's almost the hard tail time uh light tackle and fly fishing guys like i love it so looking forward to it uh tight lines happy august thanks christian always love getting those reports and thanks dave too i mean it's wonderful to get these reports from readers um the more the merrier anyone out there wants to put a video report together i'm all ears send it my way now over in connecticut a lot of the fisheries have haven't been quite as good as they've been in rhode island and mass this week uh, the bass bite has been scuffling a little bit um, we had some really good fishing in the race and there's still some good bass there but more and more bluefish are joining and it's getting a lot harder to contact the bass if it were me I would be going along the south side of fishers and throwing eels and plugs up tight. I really feel like you got a good shot on this moon of getting a really big fish that way. You might have to wait it out a little bit, but that's what I would do. Uh, the other place I'm hearing about some decent bass is the reefs outside the Connecticut River. Um, and, you know, places like Black Point and Hatchets and then heading over towards southwest and Six Mile. There's been some good fish there. It's mostly a night thing. And it's mostly a bait thing. You're either going to be chunking or throwing eels. And uh, again, don't forget those circle hooks. Um, but there have been some nice fish taken. Uh, I think you're going to average more in that like 17 to 23 pound range 
Not that that's not that there's anything wrong with that, but there are some big ones. There are some forty plus pound fish being taken. Um, it's just a waiting game. It's just a game of patience. And um, but those fish are there. And then the same could be said for sea bass fishing. You know, I talk to some guys and they say they're doing really well. I talk to other guys and they're saying, where the heck are the sea bass? And this is that time of year when, especially now that sea bass has become so popular, uh, you need to get off the beaten path a little bit. So you can't just hit those famous four reefs that you've all heard of a million times. You got to get out your chart, find that little hump of that bump that doesn't have a name that maybe not that many guys have dropped a jig on. Then you've got a good chance of pulling some better fish because those fish have been, they're uncontacted. They, they've just been sitting there. Uh, so that's how the Perseverant uh, Black Sea Bass guy is going to hook up this week. You're going to go out and you're going to find some lesser known structure. And you're going to drop some jigs and some bait on that. Porgy action in Connecticut has been just as good as it's always been from border to border. You, uh, you, know, you hit a rock pile anywhere from 5 feet of water down to 50 and um, you've got a really good shot of hooking up. And as I've been saying for a few weeks now, I mean, if you're, if you're really into that porgy thing and you want to get, like, get a good bite going, you just got to chum and chum and chum. That really gets them going. That brings the fish to you. And um, you can really turn them on if you do it that way. And then bluefish in uh, Long Island Sound. The race has got them, as I mentioned. The mouth of the Connecticut River has got some big ones. Uh, there's been some really big ones out in the Western Sound. We're going to hear more about that from Max. And then the gut also seems to always have a, like a resident population of bluefish, and, and they're there right now as well. Um, and I've heard of some bluefish too, uh, like Central Western Sound, six miles southwest and, and points west of there. Uh, some decent bluefish in that area. Um, now I'm going to toss it over to Max and just get a little rundown of what's happening in the western end of the Sound. Take it away, Max. Hey guys, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. This week it's been all about the bluefish. We got a lot of blues and we haven't seen these numbers in quite some years. Guys are getting them on diamond jigs, bunker spoons, umbrellas, top water, you name it. Fishing the bunker schools in the early morning and the evening has been the best for the action. And then guys diamond jigging 11B on the outgoing and 28C on the incoming. This is hot and heavy action right now. And then inside the island you can find a lot of cocktail sized blues up to 5 pounds or so with some bigger ones mixed in. And then the snappers are starting to trickle in. They're in our harbors, our estuaries, and our tidal rivers. Perfect family fun. We got the Bluefish Tournament at the end of this month, and we are an official weigh-in station and sign-up station. With porgies fighting, everybody's going after the porgies from the beaches and on the boats. Places like 28C, the backside of Kakini Shoals, and really any structure right now. If you're on the boat, remember to bring clam chum. This will bring the fish to your boat and help increase your bag limit. Guys from shore are scoring in on clams, sandworms from Sherwood Island, and Cat Pasture Beach Pier. The fluke bite remains slow. I mean, you really gotta work for it. Guys are reporting a slow bite. There's some guys doing well, but they're out in the deeper water drifting whole squid, gulp. I would say the backside of 26 and can 24, try to get out in 50 foot or more. And then sea bass, guys are still doing good, but you gotta be on a wreck, so. I mean, you guys were pouring slow bite, but they're not on our deep water wrecks. All the shallow water reefs aren't holding too much now. So if you go places like the Celtic wreck and all the wrecks behind Kakini and backside of the islands, if you get on top of those, that's the place to be. The striped bass bite remains slow. The best action has been early morning around the structure, like weed lines. You can find a lot of schoolies with some slot size fish. So throwing spooks working structure. And then guys chunking at night are finding the nicer fish. The bite is slow, but guys chunking, I would uh, recommend chumming a lot. And they're finding them to like 40 pounds or so. The best right bass bite we've heard is coming from middle ground. So guys going to middle ground off Stratford, trolling bunker spoons, umbrellas, and tube and worm. Thanks and good luck. And that's the story for you guys uh, this week. I hope the reports have been helping you guys out. If you ever have a question or a report or anything like that, you can hit me up at danderson at thefisherman.com. And um, if you're not... A fisherman reader, if you're just watching these reports, head over to the website, check us out. We've got a lot to offer. We've got articles that cover the entire region from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We have reports that cover that same stretch. And, um, you know, I think we've got, I think we've got the best content in New England. You've got to come over and check it out. You can even get, you know, a, a limited number of free views. And, um, you know, we're putting up new video content all the time. So give us a like, hit subscribe. And, um... And the other thing, too, that i got to rem remind you guys of is that we have these contests. We have the Dream Boat Contest, and we have the Coastal Kayak Clash. We're giving away phenomenal prizes. 
Um, actually, let's check in on um, let's check in on the standings of the kayak clash. We did not receive a submission that cracked the top three, although we did receive a 23-inch sea bass from Alfred Green, which put him in third place for the species category and is probably going to win him the fish of the month for July. We just need to wait for August 8th to come and go to make sure we don't get a late submission, and then Alfred's going to go home with a $100 gift certificate to yakattack.com. Now that we're in August, the fish of the month is going to be a sea robin. And if you can get the biggest one this month, then you too will take home a $100 gift certificate to yakattack.com. If you haven't joined the Coastal Kayak Clash yet, go to thefisherman.com, click on the contest menu, and go to the Coastal Kayak Clash webpage. You'll see that we're giving away a Hobie Mirage kayak, we're giving away a hummingbird, fish finder, and a whole bunch of other prizes. Sign yourself up and finish out the season strong. And the, um, and the Dream Boat Challenge. No changes in the standings of the Dreamboat Contest, but we do have some notable entries. Lewis Morace weighed in this 10.2 pound fluke recently at Montauk Marine Basin, placing him in 6th place in the fluke division. With Blackfish now open in Rhode Island, we received our first Blackfish entry from Leo Provost with a 11.2 pounder. And take a look at the belly on this sea robin. This glutton weighed in at 3.1 pounds, putting Mark Cristiano in 3rd place. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only season long multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 25 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. And that's it. I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you guys are enjoying the reports. I hope you're getting something out of them. Um, again, give us a like, give us a subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you know when we post something new. And um, send me some pictures, send me some reports. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.